Friends, we have been looking at the section of Isaiah that is primarily about God's judgment against Israel and Judah, although it goes far beyond that. But in the last couple of chapters, we have the, uh, heard this song of hope that God gave to Isaiah, a song that had to do with the future. But now in chapter 28, we return to the larger theme in this section of judgment. We're still hanging on to hope, though, and we wonder, well, who gets the hope and who gets the judgment, or how exactly does this work? work? Let's take a look at, at it. It begins with a statement against the northern tribes that are sometimes called Israel, sometimes called, as here, by the name of the tribe of Ephraim. Ah, the proud crown of the drunkards of Ephraim, and the fading flower of its glorious beauty. Could look good for a while, but that that flower is fading. They have the crown now, but no, they've they've turned to uh, foolish things. And it says, the proud crown of the drunkards of Eda, Ephraim will be trodden underfoot. Okay, who's, who's going to do all of this? We know it. this is the judgment of the Lord, the God of Israel. Hmm. It says, though, in that day, the Lord of hosts will be a crown of glory and a diadem of beauty to the remnant of his people. This is a very important theme in the Bible and particularly in the book of Isaiah. That while judgment is coming upon the whole chosen people of God, yet the Lord has a plan that involves the salvation of a portion of the people called the remnant, the remnant of his people. So the thing is, everybody has to go through times of difficulty, but God's got a plan of salvation, ultimate salvation that's coming in, in a future day, future to Isaiah, that it, this salvation is coming to the remnant. Now, it's, it says that, that the people will reel with wine, you know, like they turn in their distress to substances to try and numb the pain. And this includes, it says, the priest and the prophet, you know, those that actually should be teaching and speaking the word of God, yet they're staggering with strong drink. Uh, but then how will people, this remnant, how will they hear the good news, it says, for by people of strange lips and with a foreign tongue, the Lord will speak to this people to whom he has said, this is rest, give rest to the weary, and this is repose, yet they would not hear. And the word of the Lord will be for them precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little, there a little. And that sounds kind of good so far. Little by little, we're going to learn, we're going to grow, even if it may have to come from, from a, a foreign tongue. But then it ends by saying that they may go and fall backward and be broken and snared and taken. Very sad. Very sad. And yet God still has a plan for these. You know, he calls his people scoffers, those who rule the people in Jerusalem. They're there and in Judah, in the in the city uh, that God has has taken as His own, as the place of His presence, uh, but what are they saying in that city? Are they actually helping people to see the ways of the Lord? No, they say we have made a covenant with death and with Sheol. We have an agreement. Really, you think that's what's going to save you? You've turned to the powers of darkness and death, and that somehow you have a covenant with them and and everything is going to be all right? No, that is not the way. But here is the way. He says, Behold, I am the one who has laid as a foundation in Zion a stone, a tested stone, a precious cornerstone of a sure foundation. Okay, we know who this is now. This is all coming together. There's a person who's going to be the key as God shows his grace to the people. It's not their covenant with death that's going to save them, but it's this tested stone. Whoever believes will not be in haste. In another place, it says whoever believes in him 
will not be put to shame. And Paul quotes that in Romans 9, 33. And the one they believe in is, is Jesus. And he is the only way. So the larger story of judgment, yes, it's, it's still there. And if you don't want the cornerstone that God is laying, who is Jesus, well, then you're just going to have sheer terror, a decree of destruction from the Lord God of hosts. That's not what we need. No, we need mercy. And we look at God's discipline. He said, look, this is going on and on. When does this ever end? No, but whoever believes will not be put to, put to shame. So trust in the one who's the cornerstone. Father, we thank you that you've spoken to your people and time's gone by. And then you've sent your son to be the answer for us. We will believe in him and we will not be put to shame. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Blessings, friends.